What is the one thing that 93% of all organizations use in planning, budgeting, or forecasting? That's right, spreadsheets. And in this Excel for Analytics project series, we are gonna go step-by-step -step through a realistic project using Excel, taking us from raw data to punchy deliverable. And that all starts right now. You just gotta analyze stuff. All right, first things first, I'm not here to convince you that Excel is the greatest analytics tool of all time, but based on that stat I threw at you at the opening, which comes from a 2017 article published by Aberdeen Strategy and Research, by the way, and of course, memes, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that learning a little bit of Excel will do everybody some good, because here's the deal. If you've taken my free Analytics Career Foundations course, you'd know by now that Analysts support the business. The work you do at some point has to change hands and end up with the decision makers who have to be able to access, consume, and ultimately use your work to help them make better decisions. So typically, one of the most familiar mediums to do this is trusty old Excel. Any shift away from spreadsheets isn't gonna be changing overnight, so in my humble view, Learning a little bit of Excel will be a very worthwhile investment of your time. And this is precisely why I've put together this Excel for Analytics project series, which if you follow along, will give you a realistic taste of what it means to go from dirty, raw data in a spreadsheet that's attached to some ambiguous type email that you get in a request that you have to go into Cypher in order to create something meaningful to present back to your manager. Sound realistic? Maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> this is this is going to be lots of fun. And I've broken this project into four separate parts as follows, okay? The first one, right here, right now, what you're watching, this is going to be the intro where I explain to you how to get your eager mitts on the file, the source file that I'm gonna be working on so that you can follow along. Then, if you stick around in just a minute, we're gonna jump into that file and I'm gonna show you a few quick tips and tricks to increase your productivity when you're working in Excel. So stick around for that very shortly. The second video in this series is gonna be all about data hygiene. And we're gonna start digging into the data, cleaning and organizing it for the project and ensuring that we have what we need, all the information that we need to address the question that's actually being asked of us. Very important. In the third video, we're gonna begin the data exploration process. And from that, we're gonna start piecing together some of the light mock-ups of what we're ultimately going to be presenting. Then finally, in the fourth video, what we're gonna be doing is putting together that final punchy analysis package that's gonna be ready to kick back to the manager for their review. It's gonna be fun, but with that, as promised, let's go ahead and download the file together so that we can walk through those quick tips. All right, so let's jump on in. All right, I've given two options to grab this file. The first is gonna be my recommended approach where you follow the first link in the description and that's gonna take you to tmbanalytics.com slash excel for analytics. Once there, just drop your name and a valid email address into the field and you will receive an email for the file download. Now, please note, I hate spam. I'm never gonna spam you. And if you go this route, you will actually gain exclusive access to discounts that are only available to TMB Analytics Insiders for future courses. But if that sounds terrible to you, then by all means, you can go to the GitHub link, which is also in the description and download the file right there. This is entirely up to you. All right, once you get the file downloaded, I'd like you to open it up. I'm gonna go completely off script at this point because now we're in Excel land and this is where we're gonna start to have a little bit of fun. But this file, it, depending on how you downloaded it, it could have some gibberish in the naming title. Doesn't matter right now, we're gonna get into addressing a lot of those things in the next video where we go into data hygiene and cleaning and other best practices. But for now, we're focusing on navigation, okay? And I wanna start by just saying that one of the first things that I like to highlight when I'm working in Excel and talking to people about using Excel is the mouse, okay? Now, I, I think it's, it's sort of cliche to pretend like you hate the mouse or you, you, uh, you hate pie charts as much as you hate the mouse or that sort of thing or never ever touch the mouse and uh, a lot of truth is said in jest. I, I don't go out of my way to try never to use the mouse. 
I've just learned ways to get around Excel without having to use it, okay? I, I don't actually hate it, okay? There are times when I use it, I just typically don't. And the reason that people learn all these keyboard shortcuts is because they are shortcuts, they are fast, and if you're like me and you spend most of your day, most of your working day, that time adds up, in Excel, the number of times that you have to go from the keyboard to the mouse and you're scrolling and you're clicking and doing all that kind of stuff, it adds up that back and forth. So the degree to which you can keep your hands in one place right on the keyboard, uh, it, it makes a big impact. So the way I like to place my hands, and this is based on comfort alone, but I see a lot of, I'll call them power users in Excel, they have a similar posture where you've got your left middle finger is on the shift button over here and you've got your left index finger is going to be on control so they're kind of like this on there and then on your right hand your middle finger is on the up direction key and then your index and ring fingers are going to be on the left and right button so it's just kind of resting right there on the keyboard and the reason that this position is so important is because a lot of what you're doing is jumping between tabs, moving up and down data sets, jumping across data sets, highlighting things, copying things, and you can do all of that pretty much from like right here. And I'm gonna show you a lot of those things. Also, if you wanna go, I'm gonna show you a couple of things where you wanna touch page up, page down, you jump over to the 10 key, it's all right there, a very short movement from your hand uh, whereas if I needed to go use the mouse, I'm reaching over here and then I'm scrolling, I'm trying to find my cursor. And it just, it makes a lot of sense to really just stay in home base as much as you can. And the way you get good at this is by practicing, okay? And another caveat that I'll make to this is, look, there's a shortcut for just about anything you can imagine, unless you're on a Mac, that's a different story. By the way, I should say I'm using a PC for this whole thing. Uh, if you want Mac shortcuts, you can look those up. I'll try to include any that I can uncover in the description as time goes. But for now, know that everything I'm going to be talking about is going to be PC based. So uh, let's just kind of jump in. The first things first, if you open this file, it should open up to the email tab. You'll see that there's three tabs in this file. Email, there's going to be some gibberish, ext00, blah, 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 and then a sheet three. Okay. The premise of this is you got this email from your manager and uh, it, it gives you some instructions loosely and then they're giving you some data, right? So without using your mouse, if I wanted to go from the email tab to the next tab, this next EXT tab, all I have to do is hit control, hold down control and push page down. Well, it helps if I've got Excel activated, doesn't it? So Excel is activated. I'm gonna hit control, page down, and it takes you one tab to the right. Now, if I wanted to go to see what's on sheet three, I just hold control down again and hit page down again, and we're there, okay? Now, to go to the left, it's just pretty much the same, except we're going page up now. So hold control, page up, page up, and now you can see how easily you can navigate across tabs. Saves time, reaching over, grabbing the mouse, clicking, and all that fun stuff. So. Now you know how to get from tab to tab. What do you do when you want to jump around within the actual data itself? So we're back at the email tab. I'm going to hit control page down. Now we're back on this data tab. Let's take a look at how many rows of data we have. You could reach over and grab your mouse and start to scroll. Oh, I'm up here. And it's going to take a while to scroll. It's kind of laggy, which is weird, but it's laggy. Uh, I get tired of that, so I come over here and I grab this guy and I pull it down. It's super choppy and laggy. This is, you can see why this is, is silly, um, but it takes us down to 908, okay? 908 rows. That was arduous. I could have gotten there a lot quicker. How would I have gotten there a lot quicker? Well, if you hit control end, it's gonna take you to the bottom most farthest right location where in your spreadsheet there has been data populated super handy if you need to just get to the bottom of a spreadsheet especially if it's a narrow data set like this if it's a really wide data set it also helps but sometimes you don't want to go that far it just depends it's a trade-off if you happen to have 
uh, a need to get back up to the top very quickly. If you hold down control and you hit home, it's gonna take you to cell A1. Doesn't matter where you are in the spreadsheet. If I'm in the farthest right, farthest bottom, most far away place that exists in an Excel spreadsheet and I wanna go home, easy. Control, home, A1. Always goes back to home base. Remember that. Now, if I wanted to jump to the end of a particular set of columns across, so you've got row one, I wanna jump over to cell C1. Obviously, I could just hit arrow, 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 arrow. But if you're dealing with a much larger data set, uh, it becomes a lot quicker to do what I'm about to show you, which is you hold control down and you hit the right arrow and it's gonna follow all the way along any populated cell. So anything that's contiguously populated, it's gonna take you to the end of that. And what I mean by contiguously populated, here's an example, I'm gonna go over, and now I wanna go down. So I'm gonna hold control and hit down arrow. You see it stops right there. It stops right there because the cell directly below it is blank. So it's only gonna follow contiguous populated cells. If I hit control down again, it'll take me to the next stop point. Now I hit control down again, it's gonna keep doing that. This is where going control end comes in handy if you don't wanna hit all of those blocks. Now, if the data is contiguous in a column like this, then all you have to do is hit control up and it's gonna take you all the way to the top if that entire column is in fact populated. Super handy. So what have we showed you? We've showed you control page down, control page up, Control end takes you to the end. Control home takes you to A1. If you hold control and the direction arrows, it'll take you all around your data set. And now what I wanna show you is how to highlight and select certain things. So in order to do that, uh, you can hold down shift and hit your arrow keys. You see that? That's just two right arrows. You start pushing down, it's gonna highlight all of that stuff. Now, if you combine that with the control key, you can see, hit control shift over, over to the right, and I'm still holding control shift and I hit down and it's gonna do the same thing where it grabs the contiguous cell, but what if I wanted to grab this whole set? Hit end and you've got everything highlighted. Now you can copy, you can do whatever it is that you need to do by grabbing that data set. There's also something you can do from anywhere within the data set, if you wanna just hit control A, it's going to, that's like basically saying grab all, grab everything that's associated with this data table. Excel is usually pretty good about that and it will in fact grab everything that you need. That's another good trick. And if I wanted to highlight, let's say this entire column, I wanna grab the entire thing, control spacebar from anywhere in this column, it doesn't matter where you're at, Control spacebar, if I wanna grab this one, control spacebar, that's gonna highlight the entire column. If I wanna grab the row, it's just shift spacebar. Shift spacebar, okay? A few other house cleaning items, I just wanna, well, things that I should, things that are worth noting right now is that all of these shortcuts are cool and good and the ones that I'm showing you are some of the most frequently used that I just sort of take for granted and I think a lot of people do who know them but they've definitely sped up my processing and if you want to learn these things what you need to do is just use them use them resist the temptation to grab your mouse it will be a little bit painful you will stumble you will do you know hit the wrong key every once in a while but it will be worth it I can promise you that because the last thing that I kind of wanted to note is more of a preface to what's going to come in the other videos where, like I said, there's a lot of, there's a shortcut for just about anything that you can do in Excel, realistically. And not only that, there's a lot of different ways that you can do. Some shortcuts have like three or four different ways that you can go about executing them. They're different keystrokes, different patterns, different ways that people have things configured on their own machine. I have a, a habit of following a following the alt key shortcuts and what i mean by that is i tend to follow a very uh, similar path to what you would if you were using the cursor let me show you what that means so if i wanted to do something here where maybe i want to uh, copy all of this stuff you could 
highlight all this and go control C, right? That's one shortcut to doing that. But if instead I wanted to use the alternate, the alt key shortcut, you go alt, you see all of those things that pop up, they're telling you, hey, what's the next keystroke? What's the next instruction that you wanna give me? Which is like, if I had my cursor and I wanted to go, well, I actually wanna to go to the home because I'm on home. I wanna to get to this copy thing here. So follow, follow what it tells you. So hit H next. Now it's gonna show the next series of things that you hit, right? This is, this is all it's doing in a lot of these shortcuts. It's just following that click path but using your keyboard to get there. So if I wanted to now copy, I hit C, and now it says, okay, do you wanna copy it or copy it as a picture? I just wanna copy it, so I hit C, and now it's copied. It did the exact same thing as if I had just highlighted this and hit Control C, but I went about it a different way by highlighting it and going Alt H C C. See, there's different ways of doing this, and I tend to follow the click path because it's more intuitive and it's easier for people to remember and learn. So if if you didn't know that just hitting control C, this is just a bad example, but if you didn't know that, then you didn't know that. There's other keys where if you hit like control some number or shift some number, it will execute something, but you can just as easily do it um, using the alt menu. So just play around with that. Hit alt, look at what's up there. Let's say I wanna check out the data tab, I hit A. Now look at all the things that are options for me. I can group, I can, let's just check that out. So G, hit G. Now if I wanna group this, I hit G again, and it's gonna ask you, you wanna group your rows or columns. Well, I wanna group the column, so I hit down arrow and I hit enter, and now I've got a grouping on top of column A. I didn't know that, I don't use that, but now I do because I follow the path of the menu, and you can do that too. So just letting you know, those are things that you can do. And by the way, if you like this content, I'd highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel where I drop new content every week on all things analytics careers. Right now we're getting into our Excel analytics project series, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the content. And with that, we're done with the quick tips for right now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to get to cleaning this file up. See you then. Thanks for watching.